Bonjour à tous et à toutes, bienvenue. Hi everybody and welcome to this uh, latest webinar for the best properties on French Riviera. I'm Laurent Kay, journalist specialist in property and I'll be um, delighted to be with you uh, in this webinar and you already know us, uh, this group which is located in large number of countries, large number of destinations. Barnes today is a luxury brand, not simply uh, property. Uh, many other aspects of luxury, wine, cars, etc. But what you may not know is that Barnes is a key player on the French Riviera with eight locations in this area. And this is just the beginning. So here to start is a teaser to see why you need to be with us throughout this webinar. We're going to wrap up with a uh, talk from a private banker in Monaco who will explain to us what kind of reception they give to Barnes clients. And before uh, handing over to the uh, managers of these various agencies, we uh, were supposed to be hearing from Julien Boudry, who uh, is overseeing Barnes French Riviera, but unfortunately has not been able to connect uh, today for technical reasons. So I will do my best to uh, explain uh, the business to you. You can see where we're located on the map. There are eight outlets. The historic outlets are Cannes and Saint-Tropez. In 2020, the other uh, six other offices opened. The most recent one is Monaco and then Beaulieu, which shows you uh, the extent to which Barnes has decided to be present in this area. And we also have uh, an opening coming up in Rue d'Antigue in Cannes very shortly, and we'll be talking about that later. And the most recent opening is Saint Paul de Vence uh, in the hinterland, which is going to be opening in a few months' of time. Uh, another important clarification for those watching, you can ask questions in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them live or uh, going forward. And so now uh, we're going to head off to Saint-Tropez and we've decided to start in the VAR department. This is a legendary destination, Saint-Tropez, and Nelly Guayon, who is the uh, one of the managers of this agency who's going to be joining us. Nelly, everybody has heard of Saint-Tropez, uh, at least in terms of its reputation. Could you uh, tell us uh, what about this harbour and peninsula uh, keeps it as a unique destination through the generations? Well, it has been unique here for many years now. We have had uh, a lot of celebrities and we're still having this type of uh, clients. So there's the uh, genuine uh, charm, uh, nature, and also um, the uh, festive side. You are, are born and raised there, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Um, what do you think is the best place to get away from it all in Saint-Tropez in the summer months? Just well, there are some nice uh, little creeks, the Garig Beach, where you can walk down it, um, tow it from the coast path, and that's a great little place. And also you can, of course, get to it from the sea. Uh, other question, you are a local. Uh, what's your favorite season down there? Well, I would say September, October, when Saint-Tropez is a beautiful time the harbor takes on a different air we have uh, the yachts uh, out in the gulf it's that kind of time of year and we, uh, it's slightly calmer as well and i'm sure that the lights at that time of year is uh, beautiful as well indeed it is so um barnes saint-tropez how many employees do you have there well our team is eight strong four in sales two in rentals uh, an assistant and a concierge for the summer and you cover the whole of Saint-Tropez with the peninsula? Yes, so all the surrounding localities as well. So look, we're going to kick off uh, the first property uh, that we're going to uh, introduce you to today. This is a manor house uh, located just out uh, in Grimaud, uh, private estate quite close to Beauvalon 
Gulf. Uh, a little up views over the sea, beautiful property, 400 square meters with uh, uh, a pool tennis court, which is quite rare uh, in this type of property. Uh, a lot of potential, uh, maybe a bit of work to be done. And a beautiful view over the village of Saint Tropez itself. And you can see on the lower photo. Uh, Saint Tropez, uh, on the other side, is that right? So why is there a Maltese cross in the pool? Yes, well, that is what the uh, owner wanted. They He put it in. That is uh, was his second time. And also, in his, uh, he also lives in Lyon. He's got that in his first time as well, because this gentleman is a member of the Order of Malta and has been for some 40 years. So uh, he also wears a Maltese cross. So perhaps uh, Knights of Malta may have other uh, interesting uh, features. So the second property with uh, a rather different price tag, this is an uh, outstanding property. This is the yes, top of the range. Uh, this is a private and exclusive estate uh, for beautiful properties. I think this is the smallest uh, great sea view uh, near the village and also near the uh, Tahiti Beach. Nearly uh, 700 square meters with a pool, a private cinema, private gym, uh, concierge residence, uh, eight suites and outstanding views over the hills and the sea. Are there still French buyers uh, or is it mostly from other countries? Yeah, we still have French buyers at this price. Uh, there are many uh, from other countries, but we do have French buyers. Um, I don't think we can see Nelly, Emily. Is there a reason? Just a technical question there. Uh, and someone else is saying they can't see the properties. Well, we'll, we'll move on and try and get that sorted, Nelly. Ah, we can now see you. But somebody's saying. Uh, okay, there's just a, a display problem for the person watching. But for most people, it's okay. Yes. Uh, the spectator view is fine. So François de Vazier, uh, is that's all good now. Thank you. So um, Nelly, uh, can you tell us about the property, a property for rent now? Yeah, there's one in the uh, Canavie Bay, the Canavie Bay, near the Villa Topusi, which is quite well known. Again, this is a very uh, high end property, sea views property with uh, six suites. Uh, so you've got uh, Major Domo, um, cook, uh, housekeeping staff, uh, direct access to the sea. So 57 to 100,000, that's uh, from the, uh, that's from low season to high season, but that would be generally the difference. Yes, um, high season, could actually be a slightly more than 100,000 euros per week. Thank you, Nelly. Uh, that's very clear. Final question. This is property is located in the Canabier Bay. Well, you can say it in two different ways in French, Canobier, uh, Canobier. It comes from a Provencal word, which means uh, bedroom. I'm sorry, also sorry, it comes to the word for hemp, um, which grew in this area previously. So now we're going to move to the other side of Saint Tropez, Saint Saint Maxime, which is also uh, attracting significant interest. Maud Dira, Girard, and Daniel Jacques Mouk from Barnes Saint Maxime will be presenting Saint Maxime to us. Daniel, uh, first uh, general question why is Saint Maxime got this different feel uh, to Saint Tropez. Well, hi everyone. 
yeah, Saint Maxime. It's just opposite Saint Tropez, and the difference that we have is that it's more family oriented, uh, more village type, uh, all year round uh, dynamic. Uh, it's quite a lively community with all types of uh, visitors. Saint Maxime, uh, you were telling me. Uh, it's all year round, uh, has a life all year round. Yes, every weekend we have uh, events um, in the municipality, uh, festivals, um, exhibitions, uh, golf tournaments, uh, jet ski competitions. So there really are things going on all year round. In recent years, we have also had uh, free flights in October. This uh, attracts over 100,000 people over the course of the weekend. And there's a market twice a week, I think, which uh, brings in people from uh, quite some distance around. There are two markets, yeah, a little local market on Thursdays in the city center, the town center, which is local produce uh, food and on Fridays there's another market which is a little larger which yeah does get people from around the area and maybe you can tell us a little about your agency uh, your workforce so yes hi uh, so it makes sense that four of us at the agency opened 11 months ago for uh, summer 2020 and uh, so we started off uh, of firing on all four cylinders. Uh, there was a lot of demand. And so we have, in addition to the two of us, uh, an intern and an assistant. And in terms of your geographical coverage, well, we split the Gulf uh, in two, uh, Saint-Tropez on one side and Saint-Maxime, we did the left-hand side, as it were. Um, up to Grimaud and that, that the area around it. You chose to present us a magnificent contemporary uh, spectacular villa. Um, so Emily, if you can display it and we'll uh, tell, you can tell us about it. So this is uh, what really what our clients are looking for uh, at Barnes. So medium uh, purchase price for the municipality. This is a very attractive uh, contemporary build, uh, very tasteful, uh, facing the sea, beautiful uh, layouts, uh, windows with uh, all round views, very close to the beach and the seafront, and really uh, does address uh, customer expectations a large garage for bedrooms you can also park your jet ski and stuff so uh, it really is what we're our clients are looking for uh, how far away is the sea 60 80 meters i think and uh, how do you get to the beach would you take the car or the, no there you really would walk down you just have to uh, cross the road and you are at the beach the owners residents um take their paddleboard uh, go down and uh immediately uh put to water there where they are beautiful and then uh, another exceptional property at grimo again quite exceptional this was built quite recently. It's on the highest hill in the Gulf of Saint-Tropez with uh, right opposite Saint-Tropez port. So over 180 degree view, which is quite uh, unusual and facing south. So uh, in terms of the location and uh, the uh, orientation, you really can't get any better than this. And it has very spacious rooms. The price is, of course, quite uh, spacious as well, if I could say. Um, and in terms of uh, internal fittings, uh, as every 
fashionable luxury item that Barnes clients would expect an outdoor heated pool, a heliport, uh, fountains around the house, a private cinema, spa, uh, everything you could wish for. And we got in this property through an interview deal uh, with our partner in Cannes. Florent Borrego. Florent, uh, we'll get to him later. Uh, so it's important for you uh, who are watching that all of our agencies work together and uh, uh, interact on a daily basis. Um, there's a heliport here. Is that to get to the nearest airport? Or? Well, in terms of access, we have two uh, adjacent heliports in Grimo and Monaco. Co, uh, less than an hour away and we have several clients who uh, may even take the helicopter to the beach because uh, it can be quite congested otherwise uh, on the road so yeah that's quite cool to take a uh, helicopter to the beach and so in rentals again uh, an incredible property so five villas on a single site yes this is quite an iconic property on the way out of St. Maxime towards Saint-Tropez. It, uh, uh, in the background you have uh, Saint-Tropez Harbour. It really does face the sea with five villas, a private port, two pools, um, boat, garage, so you can park your boat beneath the house. Uh, it's outstanding. 16 rooms, so you can really uh, host some quite amazing events uh, in this unique venue. Uh, are there communicating houses? Well, not all of them. Uh, three are, are communicating and then uh, the others are away. Plus there's a um, caretaker's uh, residence. Um, caretaker looks after security and uh, site supervision. So it's a beautiful property. And this is the type of property you dream of when you think of the French Riviera. Thank you. Thank you from Saint Maxime. We are going to move uh, on to the Alp Maritime Departement to Cannes, where we are going to be joining up with Florent Borrego. Um, hi, Florent. You, we were you were mentioning you just now. So can you tell us about uh, your uh, city, Cannes, uh, another, an emblematic brand? Uh, tell us what is magical about Cannes. Well, you've said it all. Everyone said of Cannes, and the advantage is that it is an international village. It is a small municipality in winter, um, but quite incredible in summer. We have the uh, pleasure of uh, having amazing uh, venues such as the Croisette, one of the amazing. Uh, uh, venues worldwide, uh, which uh, brings in conferences and events every year, international events, um, and therefore be known uh, throughout the world. And so we really have an activity all year round, thanks to that. Um, and then, of course, there's Antibes Cape, uh, Can, uh, there's the Canet uh, Antibes, and the Cap d'Antibes, which is an uh, absolutely out standing location with hotels and other internationally acclaimed venues. Is there any other city with so many starred hotels in such a small area? Yes, everything is in a that single street. I think that you're delighted to see the uh, Cannes Film Festival come back uh, after the digital edition in 20. 20 is everything back to normal in that respect well yeah it's an honor to see that we have not lost that uh, event and uh, it's now going from july 6th to 18th and that will enable us to have um, incredible uh, people of course it will be uh, uh, the problem of getting in both seasonal um, rentals and uh, conference attendees Normally it takes place in May, but uh, we're very happy to know that events are, are once again on the bill. Uh, so we wish you all the best for that. So uh, in a few words, tell us about this new agency, which is going to be on Rue d'Antibes, uh, which is, of course, a very well-known street in Cannes. This agency 
will be flagship on the Riviera, one of the largest. Uh, it will have some 400 square meters of space on two floors on Rue d'Antibes. And on the right, you can see the festival um, venue. So less than 50 meters from the croisette and the uh, conference venue. So an amazing shop window uh, to showcase our properties uh, and in an appropriate atmosphere of luxury. So um, we're scheduled to open in autumn 2021, a few months time. We're still, uh, works are going on. We can't do everything over the summer, but then we will be able to host our new team uh, in October, ready for 2022 Cannes Film Festival. So Laurent, um, you're presenting us a property in Le Canet, uh, nice, a beautiful little villa. Yeah, this property um, is the most attractive price range at the moment. So 2.8 million. This property uh, is just over 300 square meters, uh, fully renovated by architects and landscape architects uh, who are very well known in the business. Uh, very, very tastefully done. The garden and the interior are magnificent. Six rooms, six bathrooms, uh, independent apartments, uh, beautiful uh, space, very competitive uh, for this segment. And uh, it's only been for sale for a couple of days and we already have visits to this property. Uh, not everybody knows the layout of Cannes and Le Cannes. Where is Le Cannes? It's just above Cannes. It is uh, contiguous. It's an historic village with uh, a great story and this property is less than one kilometer from town center with uh, restaurants of, um, of accessible on foot so it is indeed uh, very nice um and another very very exceptional property this is unbelievable built in the 19th century uh 1850 which was abandoned in the 20th century and renovated by a German in the a turn of millennium. It is virtually in the town center, uh, less than five minutes from all the shops uh, with a 15,000 square meter park uh, right there, um, 550 square meters uh, living area. Uh, and it's relatively reasonable price given the location, in fact, and the owner has to sell before the end of the year. So there is some high potential there for the location. 16,900,000. That looks huge, but given the location, it really is a, a good deal. Florent, above the steps, is that a chessboard that we can see? Yes. The current owner is a uh, fan of chess and chess boards and wanted to have one as a decoration. So can you play uh, matches on this? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, in terms of rentals, you chose uh, a villa at Cap d'Antibes. Yeah, this is a magnificent villa, uh, Western side is very attractive and appealing with, for the setting sun. This is right uh, on the waterfront uh, with the uh, unspoiled beaches of Les Andes. This is a magnificent property, a sort of English cottage from 1910 that's been fully renovated with uh, 8,300 uh, parkland, tennis court, 10 ensuite bedrooms with shower, bath, so an outstanding product for rent. It was rented, it's been good rentals through Cannes Film Festival by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, amongst other people. And the weekend, the weekend also uh, rented this property, 47,000 at low season up to over 100,000 um, at high season. So again, it doubles in fact, uh, in the high season, is that right? So is it really 
transparent can you see through the house so is that because yeah absolutely the, abs the advantage of this very flat um piece of land is that it's as though you're living right uh on top of the water and uh, because it is a cape uh you have the uh town behind so you've got everything you've got the sea the town and the hinterland so that was the uh, leonardo dicaprio property that uh, i think will be a great place to go and spend a weekend and w from there we're going to skip over to oliver kulu who is um managing partner at Barnes Bullier, which is Cap Ferrat, quite close. So, hello, Oliver. Hi. So, Cap Ferrat, Bullier, Villefranche are um, the stuff of dreams. Uh, thinking of the classic French Riviera at the end of the 19th century, is this dream still alive? Where is it going? Well, first and foremost, as you said, historically late 19th century uh, postcard, picture postcard landscapes um, with very famous owners of the day, uh, Leopold II, uh, King of the Belgians, um, uh, Eugenie, uh, Empress, uh, Rothschild, artists, uh, Romy Schneider, Cocteau, politicians, and more recently, uh, businessmen such as Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who got married uh, at Cap Ferrat. I didn't know that. So what about today? Is there life just in these uh, properties or is there life outside? Well, it is very discreet. This is a uh, uh, people come here um, because of the heritage value, but also discretion, uh, wanting to keep out of sight, out of the public eye, and keep quiet, uh, low profile. So let's, let's see some of these profiles that you've got in uh, Beaulieu. Um, this is the first one, it's quite remarkable. Um, Art Deco um, mansion. This is uh, between the walls uh, in terms of the architecture of the facade, 240 to 50 square meters. Uh, very uh, modernist uh, facade, uh, beautiful interior. The owner uh, is a decorator by trade and uh, loves decoration, and he has uh, combined the characteristics of Art Deco, uh, both inside and out. 2.6 million. This is a target price for our buyers who are looking for a combination of indoor comfort and outdoor space in this range of two to three million. Uh, is the sea a long way away? That's what you might think from the photo. Well, no, in fact, uh, this is the Nobero, it's a great address uh, in Nice. And five, 10 minutes drive, depending on the traffic, from Nice Harbour, from the uh, Bé des Anges and the uh, Bé de Villefranche in Boulogne sur Mer. So it's an excellent um, location. And uh, for those following, if any of these properties are of interest to you, then do send us uh, a message to the chat or subsequently. So now if we move on to Villefranche, another um, exceptional property. Yes, this is an outstanding property uh, along one of the uh, maritime roads, Villefranche roads as the uh, Millionaire's Bay is just beneath uh, the Leopold, uh, Leopold uh, property, which is uh, uh, a legendary property with legendary prices. It is located on one hectare of land and, and designed by Luc Svechin and a beautiful property uh, price on request. Uh, so maybe you can just quickly whisper uh, roughly. Well, 
35 million would probably do it. And if I want to rent it, well, send me your bank details. It'll be about 150 to 200,000 per month. So now uh, here is a rental. Uh, sorry, another detail of that property. This is a team effort with the other agencies, and it is thanks to Caroline um, who is to show that you that um, Caroline Metu's work. This, uh, we're working hand in hand with Barnes agencies across the world, and in particular along the French Riviera. Thanks for that uh, clarification, Oliver. And um, we'll wrap up uh, in this area with. Um, completely different style of property, highly contemporary uh, for rent at saint cap ferrat This has a spectacular view, over 1,000 square meters of space, uh, beautiful uh, lounge, dining room, very contemporary, quite geometric layout, uh, quite minimalist uh, style. It's been on the rental market for a few years and has been working, has been doing very well on that market. Uh, so high season, how long can people rent for a week or so a minimum of two weeks? Because the owner wants to select customer base and so a minimum of two weeks in summer. I see. Um, you've sold us uh, the stuff of dreams. Now, if we move eastwards to Monaco, um, I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that we'll be talking to a Monaco banker who will be telling us right at the end, but let's talk just right at the end, but let's firstly look at the market and properties. Uh, hello uh, to our two colleagues here, Sebastian and Christian. So you're from Monaco. Tell us about uh, the Monaco that you know and love. That would take us a long time to tell you about all of that. Uh, it's good living. Uh, we're uh, uh, available to people to have the space to live and to enjoy our products, our services. Uh, in terms of relations with um, the authorities, uh, there's attractive tax arrangements in Monaco, including for the French. And the whole lifestyle um, is it because people in Monaco are particularly well brought up or well brought up people come here? I don't know, but uh, this is not a question of a legal system, but of just a, a whole lifestyle. Uh, people are polite, friendly, uh, and this isn't an exaggeration, it really is a like that. So it's interesting to have your viewpoint as those who live this on a daily basis. Now, in terms of property, this really is scaling the heights. Yeah. The average prices are, well, there's very high. So there's Mayatera, which is a new development there. We've got a lot of questions about what the prices will be like in that new development. Uh, we don't really know how much that's going to be going for, but we have to uh, present a very uh, uh, complete applications. And um, yes, when I'm going to be talking about square meters, they, they are calculated differently to in France because the uh, there are differences depending on whether you're talking about uh, patios or inside the property. And so, yeah, 50%, for example, for um, open patios. Of course, um, some apartments are relatively small. Uh, 
comparable, etc. Là, c'est vraiment une loi. So it really, it does depend on the type of property, but um, there's not a hard and fast rule as those with the Carrez law in France. So uh, that was an important point, but uh, time is moving on. So you've selected uh, studio apartments at the price of a villa in uh, the French Riviera elsewhere. I hope that's not the basic price for a studio apartment in Monaco. No, um, you can find them from 1 million, 1.2 million. But this is an excellent uh, studio apartment, 49 square meters, 46 inside, plus the uh, patio. Uh, one of the first towers built in Monaco in the 1980s, a very prestigious uh, property, conciergerie service. And the owner has really taken the style of uh, uh, top hotels to uh, design their studio. Now, if we then move to the second property, rooftop, uh, seeing the photos of this. So it really is open skies. It's a triplex, 180 square meters inside, 180 outside. And as Christian was saying, um, there's a weighting uh, with a percentage on the terrace. So a three floor apartment, um, jacuzzi, uh, panoramic view um, between the sea and the mountains. Christian and Sebastian, if you could just uh, you know, speak a little more clearly. Thank you. So yeah, whoever's talking. Just to clarify, there's the uh, English uh, version. Third property. Um, Sebastian, you were saying that this is not exactly a seasonal rental, but this is rather a professional. Oh, so I thought you were chosen a professional property. Well, there are very few seasonal rentals in Monaco because when you see what the other agencies are doing, uh, having one hectare in Monaco, uh, those pools really it cannot be done. Um, when people come to spend uh, vacations, they if they're looking for this kind of space, they won't find it in Monaco. So um, in, in, it said, look at this uh, retail outlet in the Park Palace uh, shopping mall. And this is a former bank. Uh, right in the uh, Golden Square, uh, where the casino is in front of the gardens. There is the Metropole, uh, with also uh, all the top brands. And Monaco number one, with also prestige stores. So this product is um, a leasehold. And so it can be split four properties, four, four different premises uh, were there for this bank. So any type of uh, any type of business, uh, retail business, yeah, any type. But what the um, will be, of course, advanced negotiations. So we're proposing this product with this um, rent for a bank or financial institution but we could change business in which case there'll be fresh negotiations with the owner but uh, in terms of this is a good price positioning uh, it's not too low compared to the market so it's not as though there's going to be a huge in uh, increase thank you christian thank you sebastian um so if we move uh, from there, we're going to go to up to uh, Valbon in the hinterland, where we're going to talk to Caroline Bertignon. Uh, hello, everybody. So the hinterland, firstly, what type of clients do you have and what are they looking for? Well, the hinterland clients, most of them are British, Scandinavians, Dutch, Swiss, Germans, and 
in recent years there have been many French people because of the um, pandemic. So they're looking for um, main homes, second home, mostly second homes. So they're looking for uh, batid, mass, uh, typical Provencal, uh, some contemporary homes as well. And there are, there are some new builds, um, uh, exceptional uh, properties. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, people from overseas who are buying homes and who are set up uh, in Valbon. Half the population is uh, from abroad with a mix of English speakers, Scandinavians, Dutch, and of course, uh, French, uh, who are still around. So this Tower of Babel is very well maintained with the um, international schools of every level. Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of bilingual international schools. Uh, so international central Valmon, Valbon, bilingual Montessori school with a lot of uh, international uh, parents. So Caroline, uh, you've chosen a Bastide, a typical Provencal property. This uh, was built in 1772, 18th century, the last Batid uh, in this uh, part of Mougins, 10 minutes from Cannes, 336 square meters, a nice uh, uh, 2,650 uh, square meters of land, um, heated pool, uh, an uh, artist studio for your guests, and a very attractive price for the hinterlands, 2.65 million in Mougins. How far from the nearest beach? About 15 minutes. Second property, uh, contemporary, very different. This is uh, quite amazing. Well, uh, as Oliver was saying, uh, he, well, we, we got this in through him. Um, I think it's the most beautiful property uh, presently on the market in Mouchin, uh 10, 15 minutes from Cannes, uh, two minutes from Mouchin, uh concealed at the end of uh, uh, cul-de-sac, um, no other people, no, no overviews, um, 1,200 square meters, 7,525 square meters of land, a large 20 meter heated pool, a multi-sport uh, tennis court, and then uh, a huge lounge with a fireplace, five suites, uh, master bedroom over 120 square meters, uh, guest house with two other rooms, and of course, all the uh, services. Uh, I'm buying it, says Laurent. Um, so what is a multi-sport tennis court? Well, you can play handball, soccer, basketball, it is you can uh, lay it out for a number of different sports and um, we have a question um someone is asking if buyers uh, go back and forth uh, or do, do you have the same type of buyer on both sections uh, hinterland and um the hinterland well it is quite different i think here we have you can see views you have the sea view from the first floor, but it's not really uh, what people are looking for. It's families that are looking for a friendly atmosphere uh, and out of the crowds. Um, these families, of course, do occasionally go to the beach, but it's really not quite the same type of profile. And uh, another question um, for Barnes French Riviera. Um, what about uh, rentals? This property that I was previously uh, showing you is also available for seasonal rentals. Um, but here we have a contemporary villa with uh, fully serviced, um, as you would expect, six bedrooms, all en suite, of course, large uh, pool, 15 meter pool, heated pool, two minutes from Valbon, two minutes from Mougin and it is uh, very uh, easily accessed. There's also a professional kitchen with a summer dining area at the pool. 
and so in low season 10,000 euros a week and up to 21,000 uh, in the high season and these are uh, not the same as on the coast so a different offering with uh, rather different prices for a different customer base absolutely thank you caroline for this uh, explanation of the hinterland and as i was saying to you uh, at the start of this webinar we're not going to meet with uh, René Jamy, who is a credit structuring manager in a Monaco bank called CMB. And I'm going to hand René uh, over the floor. Basically, um, I'd like you to present uh, your activity. Thank you, Laurent, for your invitation. And very briefly, CMB Monaco is a private bank uh, in the principality it was set up 50 years ago. Uh, 1976 to be precise cmb is 100 percent owned by medio banca which is a listed uh comp bank on the milan stock exchange cmb 245 uh strong workforce in Mexico, uh from in comprising uh top management all the way down sales reps front office and back office um this is important because cmb is uh, a, a completely local a structure, uh, operationally speaking. Um, so pri uh, private, top of top end uh, customer base with two segments, investment uh, with uh, wealth management and finance, which is what I'm responsible for. So in terms of finance, CMB has an exclusive partnership with Barnes. Um, what are you offering for Barnes clients? What treatment what type of uh, you know, reception will they get well in general um partnership uh, talks about uh, beneficial financial terms this is in fact not the case here uh it's not of course that they'll be less well treated than anybody else i hope very much hope not don't worry about that but we wanted to focus on the reputation and uh, image, brand image of Barnes and CMB. Uh, today, we have just seen all these properties presented to us. We are looking at uh, luxury residential property and in luxury, the most important thing is the quality of service, uh, responsiveness, and we are very keen to uh, implement that. Uh, so for Barnes customers, this means they have direct access to the credit structuring team for uh, loans, direct access uh, at a very early stage. Um, so supposing uh, most in financial institutions uh, will not want to talk uh, unless the deal has virtually been done, a uh, property deal, whereas we are very happy to have conversations well ahead of time with customers and uh, property real estate agents and other um, internal and uh, third party players uh, throughout the acquisition process. So your response time is very quick. Is that right? Um, so you, you will have an answer very quickly for Barnes clients, whether it's yes or no. Yeah, 48 hours. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we cannot say yes to everything. We have a strategy and certain types of appetite, but uh, we quickly will tell people whether or it's yes, no, or yes, uh, provided this, that, and the other. Uh, it's simple. What, what, what is the entry level price? How much uh, are you needing to look to be buying at the benefit from your services? Well, We thought about this long and hard uh, before looking at the minimum entry price. One million euro is the answer because uh, basically we realized that private banks today want to serve and finance properties in luxury and ultra luxury. Um, so for rather smaller properties uh, uh, that we were also heard about today, uh, outstanding properties that, that there are that, that cost two, three million euros that attract private clients but uh, do not have many offers because for these amounts, they have to turn to um, retail banks or retail plus banks, and they cannot provide the same type of quality of service as a private bank can for that level. So you're based in Monaco. Uh, do you deal with the entire French Riviera? Uh, yes, well, uh, 
the Riviera is our core business, uh, including Monaco from Saint Tropez uh, all the way along. Uh, all the locations that you've heard about today, uh, but you say so you're not restricted to Monaco, no. And uh, in fact, we have broadened the CMB strategy to other locations, the French Alps, uh, with the uh, prestigious ski resorts, uh, Megev, Chamonix, Courchevel, and uh, Paris too, because uh, we know that to date, top end clients that have a residence in Monaco will also generally uh, have something at Saint Jean Cap Ferrat, a uh, ski uh, chalet, of course, and then they will also have a base in the city uh, in Paris. So that's also part of the funding offering. So uh, contacts uh, with CMB in this partnership happen via Barnes agencies. So those who of them who are listening to us don't get in touch directly. You go through Barnes agencies. It's all very quickly, uh, virtually instantly, uh, but it does have to happen through uh, Barnes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, René Jamy. And uh, you have a gift, uh, apparently, a video which you have just uh, Put together. Can you tell us about that before we see that? Well, very simply, I'm going to show run the video, uh, and that will tell you what it's all about. The Bay of Monaco, or your next home, a zero emission engine, or the fastest way to race towards the future, the birth of a child, or a new branch of the family ready to go far. And here, a student or the woman she will become. And this, is it a security on the stock exchange or an investment in a better world? And now, the time to measure what you've achieved or the time that separates you from the next venture. If for you, wealth is not a point of arrival, but the starting point to look ahead, we share the same vision. And the question we're ready to ask you is, what makes you think ahead? CMB Monaco, banking ahead. Yeah, great philosophy. And we can see what is um, motivating you. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you to all of us. We've had several questions with regard to specific prophecies, and we won't deal with them directly now, but we'll be putting you in touch uh, as appropriate with the uh, different managing partners. Um, thank you, Emily, uh, for the technical help. Uh, thank you to Flavi that has helped us to prepare this webinar um, and enable us to virtually visit these um, properties. Uh, one of the, some of those beautiful available on the market to uh, show you the extent to which Barnes has become in a few years a major player on the Riviera. And this is, we're only just getting started because, as you've seen, uh, we're going to have a new agency open in Saint Paul de Vence. Thank you all. Thank you to all our uh, BU managers that uh, have presented these properties. Thank you for being with us. And we look forward to being back in touch with you very soon with another Barnes webinar.